only for the basic uh, regression step. So that, uh, uh, as I told you, in general, we don't want to emphasize too much on proofs. But uh, uh, for those really, really important stuff, I, I have to show you, you know, where does it come from, where does it go, so that you you know what the regression is, where does the all or less estimator come from, so on and so forth. So again, uh, for this course, probably only require two proofs, and both of them come from this chapter. And what I can guarantee from you is, uh, first of all, these two proofs, you're going to see them again in the homework number three. And again, in the midterm exam, the very first question will be a proof question. Will be either one from these two proofs. So that, uh, <laughs> so that these two proofs, you're going to see them in the homework and in the exam, right? So let's, uh, let's learn them in detail. Uh, first of all, First of all, the idea is uh, how do we derive the all or less estimator? Basically, where does a all or less estimator come from? So consider a linear regression y over x, so that alpha and beta they are intercept and the slope. Those are the true values of intercept and slope. And you know we denote alpha and beta. For example, suppose say suppose y is your wage, x is your education. So the relationship between your wage and education could be something like, say, uh, let me make up some numbers. It could be something wage equals to, say, 10 plus 50 times education, right? So so on and so forth. So that alpha is 10, uh, beta is 50. That's the corresponding intercept and slope. That's the corresponding answer. But again, in practice, we never know the true value, right? So maybe... You know, only the one who created the data set knows the true value. Maybe God knows it, but for, for you applied users like you and me, we never know. So that what we can know is uh, based on yi and xi, right? Based on yi and, and xi, we want to calculate back our alpha and beta so that we call it, uh, we estimate the value of alpha beta. So our our answers, we're going to call them alpha hat, beta hat. Hopefully, our alpha hat, beta hat will be close to the true value, right? So basically, hopefully, it's good. Good in the sense, you know, last week, we introduced three standards. We introduced the unbiasedness, we introduced a efficient, we introduced a consistent, right? So that let's, first of all, let's introduce a formula to calculate alpha hat, beta hat. We call it all or less estimator. Second of all, once we derive the alpha hat, beta hat, the formula, let's check our all or less estimator. Is that good or bad, right? Good in what sense, bad in what sense? So that we're going to check those three standards one by one. Is it unbiased or not? Is it uh, efficient or not? Is it uh, consistent or not, right? So that's the schedule you know, uh, of today. So that, that's the two proofs. The first proof, let's see how to derive our formula alpha hat, beta hat. That's the first one. The second proof will be once we derive our alpha hat, beta hat, especially beta hat, let's check if our beta hat is unbiased or not, if our beta hat is uh, efficient or not, if our beta hat is uh, consistent or not. Okay? So those will be the two proofs we're going to do today. So let's start. First of all, let's derive our beta hat, alpha hat, beta hat. We call them OLS estimator. Ordinary least square est you know, estimator. Let's see. How do we derive all or less estimator? We want to minimize RSS by selecting alpha and beta. We want to minimize RSS. What's RSS? RSS basically corresponding to UI squared and then the summation. So what's UI? UI is right here, this guy. So equivalently, you can write down UI is Y minus alpha minus beta x, right? So basically, this is our UI, right? What's in the parentheses is our UI, right? So our job is we want to minimize residues, you know, UI square and then summation by selecting alpha and beta. What's the intuition? Let me see. Uh, do I have the... Um, I have a sample file for another class. For the big data class, I created uh,
So, for example, I have uh, some data set uh, Y and X. The true relationship is intercepted one, true slope is one. So that, uh, like I said, uh, for apply users like in you and me, we never know the true, real, true alpha, true beta, right? So given these observations, given those, uh, you know, Ys and X, then we plot our data look like this, some Ys and some X. Based on these observations, we try to figure out back the alpha hat or beta hat, right? How do we calculate alpha hat or beta hat? Idea is very simple. We try to, we try to, you know, minimize RSS. Let me show you by using this. Let me make it bigger. So in this graph, for example, when I choose A and B, intercept and slope, both of them to be one, which happens to be the true value, right? So that correspondingly, I can draw a fitted line, which is a Y equals to one plus one times X. The correspondingly, I draw those red color bars. Those red bars, they are from my observation. Draw a distance to my fitted line, right? So red color bars, they matter how far from my fitted line to my observations, right? The UIs corresponding to each other. So basically a good fitted line, correspondingly, those red bars supposed to be small, right? Uh, a bad fitted line, correspondingly, red color bars will be large, right? For example, suppose I choose a different intercept, let's say a negative one, so that you know, it's lower than, than the true value intercept, right? True value is a positive one, but I choose a negative one to be the intercept. Correspondingly, then of course, all those distances from observation to my feet line will be, will be bigger than, than before, right? So that overall, when it, when it calculates the, you know, RSS, RSS is a summation of those residual, those red bars, right? Of course, I square them and calculate summation, right? So that RSS, of course, will become bigger when I choose a bad intercept, right? So that in this case, see, RSS is bigger now, it's 8, 400 something. If you try even you know, further, then RSS will be even bigger because again, the distance will be even <laughs> bigger than before, right? That's the idea of RSS. So that RSS basically measures the distance from the fitted line you're suggesting to my observations, right? Basically the summation of those red bars, you know, right? Of course, I square the red bars and the catalyst summation, right? Similarly, you know, then I try different slope. This is a the best slope, which is positive one. If I choose a different number, say positive two, <laughs> suppose I choose a you know different slope, which is a different from the true value one, then you know rotate a little bit. Now, correspondingly, the red bars again will be bigger than before, right? So that RSS see three thousand something, right? So if I choose even bigger slope. Now RSS even bigger because the red bar is even bigger, right? So basically, which correspondingly the idea is how do I select the best fitted line? How do I choose, choose the best alpha head, beta head? How do I choose the best intercept, best slope? Very simple. Just a try different lines whenever I can minimize RSS. Again, RSS is a summation of those distances, right? Basically, I can minimize those red bars, right? So Whenever I can minimize the distances, the corresponding A and B, intercept and slope will be my best answer. That's the simple idea of all or less. Just a try different value of A and B, intercept and slope, right? Then correspondingly, whenever I can find, I can minimize the bars, the distances, then that's the best answer, right? So switch back to theory. So I want to minimize RSS by choosing alpha and beta, right? So that's the idea of all or less, ordinary least square. By the way, RSS stands for residual sum square. Residual is this guy, UI. Sum, because I have a summation, right? Square, I put a square before I take a calculation summation because I don't want positive number, negative number, cancel out of each other so that I square them first and then calculate summation, right? 
So that's the theory. So if you leave the job to computer, computer gonna simply try every single value, alpha, beta, so on and so forth, searching everything, right? But uh, uh, let's see, you know, how do we do it from uh, theory? If you want to minimize RSS by choosing alpha and beta, if you want to minimize something, in math, we learn something called the uh, derivative. You still remember if you want to, if you want to find, for example, for quadratic function, right? If you, it is a U-shaped curve or reverse the U-shaped curve, if you want to find the minimum of the curve or maximum of the curve, the solution very simple. In math, we take first the derivative, right? For example, say the U-shaped curve, right? If you want to minimize the curve, basically you want to check out the derivative. Whenever the first derivative equals to zero, the corresponding number is our solution, right? So then correspondingly, we get to the idea. Just now, what I'm what I'm mentioning is, uh, suppose we have a quadratic function form. Then we basically we just uh, we just uh, try different different location. Over here, the first derivative is a zero. What's first derivative? Very simple, slope, right? The, the slope at this point is a zero. So that correspondingly, this is the bottom. This is the lowest point. This is the minimum of the curve, right? Other locations, for example, right here. Over here, the slope or the first derivative is not a zero. It's positive, right? Over there, right here. Oops. Oh, there, you know, right here, the first derivative is negative, right? It's not zero neither, right? So that basically, if we want to minimize something, we just find looking for whenever we can, you know, set the derivative to be zero, right? And so correspondingly, we got to the, the, the minimum, right? So, so, oops. So that, uh, go back to theory. So that's why we take deriv derivative RSS to alpha, RSS to beta. For example, let's focus on alpha. We take derivative RSS to alpha and set this number first derivative to be zero so that we, we solve this equation. We solve this equation to find the value of our alpha hat, beta hat, right? Right here, because we have two unknowns, alpha and beta, so that we can take two derivative. RSS, take the derivative to, to alpha. RSS, take the derivative to beta. Set both of them to be zero, so that we have two equation. That's an equation system, right? Two equation. We have two equations and the two unknowns, alpha and beta, so that from theory, it should be doable. In other words, uh, we have two equations, both of them equal to zero, right? That's a two equation system. And we have two unknowns, alpha and beta, right? So two equation, two unknowns should be good to, to solve so that we can get a solution, right? So let's take a closer look what they are. Uh, the first equation, let's take a closer look. Where does this come from? Then we take derivative R RSS to alpha. RSS is right here. First of all, you know, if you look at RSS, it's a summation of uh, ui squared. Ignore summation for a second. Ignore summation for a second. ui squared. What's the derivative of something squared? For example, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x, very simple, right? That's why. You know, when we take derivative, the der you know, uh, we get two times ui. See, two times ui. Still remember, ui is what's inside of the parentheses, right? UI, ui is y minus alpha minus beta x, right? That's what where, you know, where, where we got two times the parentheses. But where do we have a negative one? Negative one is... Uh, don't, you know, don't forget, we are not taking derivative RSS to UI. Actually, we are taking derivative RSS to alpha, right? So that the first term you got, you know, derivative RSS to, to UI. <laughs> but don't forget, we have, you know, what we want to take derivative to alpha. So that 
by using so-called the chain rule, right? If you still remember the chain rule from calculus, you need further multiply by something per, you know, derivative of ui to alpha. It's right here. Partial ui to alpha, right? ui to alpha, how large it is, very simple. ui, the definition is right here. ui is a y minus alpha minus beta x. If you take the derivative to alpha, see, the coefficient of alpha is right here, right? The coefficient is exactly negative one, right? Again, ui is right here. If you take derivative ui to alpha, basically the answer is uh, the coefficient of alpha, which is negative one. Right, that's why you know where does we, where do we have a negative one come from? So the first part times the second part that's the so-called the chain rule. First of all, we have to take derivative R RSS, take derivative to, to ui, right, and then multiply by you know derivative ui to alpha, right? Multiply the summation we call the chain rule. So that we got the first part times the second part the negative one, right? So that we set this first derivative to, to be zero, right? Put it over here for a second. Let's call it equation number one. We label it uh, equation 3.2. Put, uh, put it right for a second. Let's check out the second derivative. Derivative RSS, take a derivative to beta. The first term will be exactly the same because we, we need to take derivative RSS to ui, right? So that we get two times ui. Second of all, we need to multiply by using the chain rule, multiply by something, you know, derivative ui to beta, right? ui is right here. You know, when you take derivative to beta, but in other words, what's the coefficient of beta? It's negative x. Right, ui equals to something, you know, is a function of a beta, right? What's the coefficient of beta is negative x, right? That's why we got a negative x come from, you know, it's right here, right? So by using the chain rule, it's the first term multiplied by the second term so that we get to the derivative to, to beta, right? Again, set to be zero. So that, that's why we have two equations. So that they should be good for us because we have two unknown, alpha, beta. Now we have two equations. Just to solve these two equations so that we should, we should be good to get alpha hat, beta hat. Basically the solution of alpha and beta, right? So let's solve them one by one. By the way, right here, we use a partial derivative notation. Uh, you know, uh, the reason why we use a partial derivative is uh, because we have two unknowns, alpha and beta. If you have only one of them, usually the derivative is a dy dx, right? Right here, right here is a, just a fancy version of the d. Looks like d, but uh, then when you take partial derivative, you use this kind of <laughs> fancy notation, right? It looks similar to D, but uh, you know that's used for for the case a partial der derivative because we have two unknown alpha beta. That's why we need to use uh, this partial derivative rather than dy dx. That's a little technical detail. Let's uh, simplify these two equations one by one. Let's focus on the first equation, three point two. Uh, the first equation, let's try to simplify a little bit. First of all, first of all, we have some constant two right here, and we also have some constant negative one right here, right? Notice that the equation right hand side of the equation is a zero. Right hand side of the equation is a zero. So that actually, you know, actually we can cancel out this constant, for example. You we can cancel out two. Because for example, suppose we have an equation two times e two, two times x equals to zero, right? Then of course we can <laughs> we can cancel out two, basically reduce to x equals to zero, right? Similarly, for example, if you got an equation, say two times parentheses, let's say uh, y minus x equals to zero, right? Similar again, <laughs> you know, you can cancel out two, right? Basically, you know, two times something equals to zero. Must means that the, what's inside the parentheses equals to zero must be true, right? So that's why, first of all, first of all, we can 
we can ignore the, the number constant two. You can cancel out constant two right here, right? So that we could similarly, we can also cancel out negative one. We can ignore big. In other words, if negative one times say x equals to zero, right? It must mean x itself is a zero, right? So so that's why that's why we can ignore you know two, we can ignore negative one. Basically, the first equation reduces to summation of this part only equals to zero, right? We can ignore those constant numbers. So that, that's why that's why we got the equation right here. We can simplify by ignoring those uh, constant numbers, right? Again, it's simply because right-hand side is zero. Two times x is zero. Must means x itself is zero, right? Right here. Now, this equation, summation of parentheses equals to zero, right? Let's break in three parts. The first part is summation of yi. Second part is summation of negative alpha. Third part is summation of negative beta x, right? So let's take a look one by one. The first term, very simple, summation of yi, which is right here. <laughs> Just a copy it right here. Second part, summation of a negative alpha. Summation of negative alpha. Negative, I just copy it right here, right? So what's summation of alpha? Summation of alpha is right here. This is a shorthand notation. Basically it means calculate this number from I, from one, two, three, four, and two n, right? Now since I, you know, alpha calculate basically reduces to alpha, calculate uh, first time, second time, third time, and two n times, right? Basically, the summation of alpha, basically, you know, shorthand notation is exactly alpha plus alpha plus alpha plus alpha until n times, right? So that's why it simply reduces to n times alpha, right? So that's why the second term, second term actually doesn't vary by i. So that's that's why second term summation of alpha simply reduces to n times alpha, right? Next one, summation of negative beta x. Summation of negative beta x, right here, negative sign, I can put all sides summation, right? Similarly, beta is a constant term. I can also put all sides summation. For example, say summation of 2x, of course, equals to two times summation x, right? <laughs> so that's why I can put a constant term all sides of the summation, right? That's a little trick. So that's why, that's why I can put a negative sign and also beta I can put all sides of the summation, right? So that I can I, I get to such an equation. Break into three terms, three parts, right? Now, this equation, what I'm going to do next is I'll move an alpha to the right-hand side. I simply move an alpha to the right-hand side so that uh, summation of y minus beta summation x equals to an alpha, right? And then I simply skip one line, which is uh, then next line everywhere I divide by n because just now n alpha equals the summation y minus the summation beta x, right? So both sides I divide by n so that alpha equals to summation y divided by n, beta summation x divided by n, right? So that I got to this equation. Is it clear, you know, where does it come from? I simply skip a line divided by n, right? If uh, this confuses to you, you just uh, you know, you know, fill in fill in the the line. Basically, move n alpha to the right hand side so that n alpha n alpha equals the summation of y minus beta summation of x, right? And then both sides divided by n, you should get to this this equation, right? Both sides divided by n got to this equation. I just uh, skip a little bit. Now, the first equation, from the first equation, I got this. I call it equation 3.4. Put uh, this equation aside for a while. That's what we got from first equation, right? Put uh, right here, mark it at uh, 3.4, uh, put it aside. Let's continue to work on the second equation because so far we only did, uh, only simplify first equation. Let's simplify the second equation. The second equation is right here. Similarly, let's cancel out two, cancel out negative one, right? So the second equation could be simplified to this parenthesis times x 
and then summation equals to one, uh, equals to zero, right? Uh, again, right here, what I want to emphasize is uh, this is a shorthand notation, which is uh, the parentheses right here, multiplied by the parentheses right here, and then calculate the summation, right? In other words, if you want, you can put a bracket, you know, and they <clears throat> multiply first and then calculate summation, right? So that, anyway, so far, what we want to do is uh, we, we can, first of all, cancel out two, cancel out negative one. So that the equation number two could be simplified to summation of uh, these parentheses times x, right? Parentheses times x. So that we got the equation right here. That's our second equation. Let me make it bigger. That's how our second equation, you know, uh, simplifies too, right? We simply cancel out two, cancel out a negative one, so that we get this equation. Now, similarly, let's break this equation in three parts. The first part will be summation of uh, y i x i, right? Y times x. That's the first term, right? Second term will be, you know, negative alpha times x, and then summation, right? Negative alpha x summation. Right here, the only little trick I did is I put alpha outside the summation because again, alpha is a constant term. And you know, summation of uh, say two x equals to two times summation x, right? We can always put constant term outside the summation. Question? Oh, uh, because, because right here, it's alpha times x, xi, and then calculates, uh, takes the summation, right? In the first equation, we don't have xi, a, a, xi at all. In other words, it's times one, right? So for the first equation, summation of a bunch of ones, you know, one plus one plus one, <laughs> you know, sounds worse. That's why n equals to n, right? But in the second equation, actually, we multiply by xi, which varies by i. <laughs> that's why, <laughs> that's why you know, not as uh, simple as uh, the first equation. We have to, we have to keep xi right there. It's not a constant one, right? So that's the second term, alpha x, and then take summation. Alpha x take summation. Similarly, third term, negative theta xi xi summation, right? So xi times xi, of course which is xi squared, right? And then similarly, I put negative beta all sides of summation so that I get a negative beta summation xi squared, right? So that's the three terms I got, three terms I got. Right here, the next line, the only trick I'm gonna do is uh, I want to plug in my alpha. What's my alpha? Still remember, from the first equation, we got a formula we call it 3.4. This equation is uh, alpha equals to how many betas, right? <laughs> this equation, from the first equation, we derived such a formula. Alpha equals to a function is something, you know, of a beta, right? See, the left-hand side is alpha, right-hand side is beta. So that from equation number one, we got an expression, alpha equals to how many beta, right? So that's why I want to plug in this equation, plug in this formula into here. I want to replace alpha by this parenthesis so that once I plug in this formula, once I replace alpha by how many beta, so that what gonna, what gonna be my equation is uh, I have betas only. I don't have any alpha anymore, right? So that I have uh, only beta. So one equation, one unknown, so that I simply collect terms, I can I can calculate beta equal to something, right? <laughs> That's the reason why. So let's see. First of all, I plug in my alpha. Alpha is right here. Parenthesis, you know, I just copy and paste my equation 3.4 so that I got uh, right here, right? <laughs> and then now let's continue to simplify this because uh, because eventually I want to simplify this equation. I want to I want to calculate beta equal to something, right? I want to you know collect beta terms only. So let's see. First of all, inside of the parentheses, there are two terms. Each of them they need multiply by summation x. 
So, so that let's simplify. You know, summation y i x i copy it right here. Second right here, one over n summation y times summation x. So that I got right here, one over n summation y times summation x. Right? Is it clear? You know, that's the first term of the parentheses multiplied by summation x. Multiply by summation x, right? Which is comes to here. Now the second term. First of all, see negative and outside. We also have a negative, so then they cancel out each other. Negative, negative. So that we got the positive, right? So so that uh, you know, take a closer look so that uh, don't make mistake with uh, positive negative sign. So continue beta one over n summation x beta one over n summation x. Right here, summation x times summation x, so that we get the summation x squared, right? Summation x parentheses squared. In other words, uh, you know, <laughs> we get the same, you know, summation x times summation x, right? You know, uh, it will be suggested to put some parentheses if you, you know, uh, because sometimes, for example, right here, that's x squared first and then summation, right? Right here, it's Summation, summation first, and then square, right? So that uh, <laughs> it will be suggested to put on parentheses to make it clear. Is that square first or, or, or summation first, right? Then the very last term, I just copy and paste right here, which is beta times x squared, right? So that I have uh, such an equation, C, uh, beta, beta, I have beta terms only. So that what I want to do is, uh, I want to collect those uh, beta terms, right? And so that beta times something equals to something, right? So that eventually I divide the uh, coefficient so that I want to know beta equals to what? So let's see. First of all, I want to move these beta terms to the right-hand side. I want to move these two beta terms to the right-hand side, right? So first of all, this term, this term, negative, negative beta summation x squared, if you move to the right-hand side, becomes positive, right? And the, the positive, term, positive term, if I move to the right-hand side, becomes a negative, right? That's why, that's why where the, the, these two come from. Again, this term, negative term, if I move to the right-hand side, become positive. Positive term, move to the right, become negative, right? So that, that's why, you know, what I got these two terms. I simply reverse the order of these two because a negative positive, right? So that I collect beta and I put a bracket right here because see, beta and a beta. Only these two terms have beta so that I collect beta and put the coefficient right to there, right? All right, now from right here, next step, very simple. I simply divide the bracket to the left-hand side so that I, I got a formula for beta. Beta basically equals to left hand side divided by this guy, right? So the on top is the left hand side right here, summation y x i so on so forth. Divided by the denominator is the bracket right here. I call it a base right here, right? So that finally I have formula. I put a head on top to denote this is finally the formula of a beta. <laughs> so that given x and y so that I have a formula for beta. I got a beta hat right here, right? First of all, take a closer look. My formula beta hat, formula of beta hat, right-hand side, they are y's and x only, right? There, there's no alpha, there's no beta at all. In other words, the formula of beta hat only depends on y and x. Right? Because y and x, those are the only stuff we know in reality. For example, y is wage, x is education. We only, based on the information wage and education, we want to calculate our beta hat, <laughs> right? So that's a first of all. Second of all, once we have alpha hat, once we have a number of alpha hat, we can always calculate alpha hat very easily. How? Recall. Recall our equation up here, 3.4. Given beta, whenever we have an answer for beta, we can plug in this beta, beta hat. So that correspondingly, I get a number for alpha, right? So whenever we have beta, plug in right here so that we always have answer for alpha, right? So that 
so that a formula for for alpha is right. First of all, by the way, by the way, before words right here, I didn't simplify it. But if you take a closer look, we actually, if you want, we have a shorthand notation for this guy, one over n uh, times a summation of y. Summation of y divided by n. What's what's this term? The mean, right? So that we have a shorthand notation. If you want, you can call it y bar, right? <laughs> so that's why the first term, actually, if you like, you can simplify it to y bar, right? y bar, by definition, is a 1 over n summation of y. That's average, right? Similarly, right here, 1 over n summation x. If you want, you can use a shorthand notation x bar instead, right? So that actually this equation could be simply, if you want to use a sh you know, shorthand notation, alpha simply equals to y bar minus beta times x bar, right? This equation 3.4 could be rewritten to this, alpha equal y bar minus beta times x bar, right? So that whenever we have beta, for example, beta hat, we have answer right here. Simply plug in beta hat right here, we can go to the formula for alpha hat. Right. Whenever we have answer for beta, we, we can immediately we're gonna have an answer for beta, for alpha as well. Right. That's the corresponding relationship. So so far that's the derivation. That's the first proof. That's the how do we derive all of the estimator for alpha hat, beta hat. Right. So so frankly speaking, it's not hard at all, but uh, just a little bit tedious, right? <laughs> just uh, sit down, be patient, derive a line by line, right? And make sure you don't make mistakes such as positive, negative, and you know, move terms, you know, simplify, you know, those parentheses, right? First term times second term on the first, right? <laughs> not hard at all. You, you know, this is basically what we learned in probably in high school, right? <laughs> Solve those two equation system, got to have a, right? <laughs> Just be patient so that you, you, everybody should be able to do this, right? <laughs> so, but, uh, uh uh, any any questions before I give you more, you know, comments for these formulas? Any questions so far on how do we derive these formulas? <laughs> well, you, you're gonna do this exactly the same exercise in the in the next homework, homework number three. Just to do it by yourself. You can you can try it. You know, try to do it by yourself. If you get stuck or making run into some mistakes. You can check out my lecture notes, right? To see where it did wrong. So, but it should be should be simple. Just uh, uh, a couple of uh, comments. First of all, this formula is still a little bit uh, uh, complicated, uh, kind of ugly, right? So you know, I want to show you some some tricks to verify your formula. First of all, let's take a closer look. If you look at the top part, denominator, yi, xi, you know, summation y, summation x. The first little trick is if you, you know, the top part, if you replace y by x, if you replace y by x, actually you're gonna see this is exactly reduces to the bottom. For example, if you replace y by x, this becomes x times x, of course, x squared, it will reduce this to this, right? Similarly, if you replace y by x right here, summation of x times summation x, which is simply reduces to summation x squared, right? So that's a simple way to, first of all, to, 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 to double check your formula, right? For example, suppose, suppose you, you forgot to put uh, two right here. Then they, they double check, they, you know, by replacing the top, or you know, if you replace y by x, it looks like it doesn't replace, it reduces to the bottom. There must be something wrong with your formula, right? So first of all, it could be a simple way to verify, to check if your formula is right or wrong, right? By the way, why it happens? Why, why, you know, if I replace y by x, if I let y equals to x, top equals to the bottom. <laughs> Why it happens? Very simple. Let me show you. Let me draw some lines to you so that you, you're gonna know. For example, for example, 
in the if y always equals to x, if y equals to x, again, if if y always equals to x, what does your graph look like? You're gonna have observations here, here, here. Oops, where's my graph? There's my graph, all right here. My graph gonna look like this, right? If y always equals to x, they're gonna nicely located on the 45 degree line, right? If y always equal to x. Given such a data set, if you want to run all of this regression, <laughs> the formula of the slope supposed to tell you the slope must be since 45 degree line, the slope should be equal to, it should be one, right? That's why if your y always equals to x, if you replace y by x, Hence, this formula beta hat, since on top and the bottom, they, 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 they are the same as each other. Then in that special case, beta hat simply reduces to one, right? Because top and bottom, they are the same. <laughs> you know, beta hat simply reduces to one. So that <laughs> basically this, the, the way I, the verification I'm, I, I'm showing you is simply trying to show you, given such a special case, the formula of all of this beta hat supposed to reduce this, reduce this to, to one, the slope is one, right? So that's why this should be, could be a way for us to verify our formula right or wrong, right? <laughs> that's a little technical detail to, to show, you know, uh, to, if you replace y by x, all supposed to reduce this to bottom, right? That's a little trick. Anyway. Uh, anyway, move. Okay. Second of all, second of all, you know, the first term and the second term looks a kind of similar in the sense, for example, bottom right here. This is x squared first summation. Bottom is a summation first and then square. Right <laughs> on top, this is y times x first, and then summation. Second term, summation first, and then multiply <laughs> each other. Right. So the first term and second term, in some sense, a little bit uh, similar. Right. <laughs> that's a that's a way to remember. But anyway, so far that's the original formula for our slope beta hat. And so, frankly speaking, it's a little bit uh, complicated, a little bit hard to to memorize. But uh, I'll show you so show you some simplified version of this formula in, in a second. Uh, in, uh, for example, uh, in say Excel, uh, for undergrad level econometric courses, uh, very often students, uh, if they if they learn Excel only, then a popular exercise will be given given a column of uh, x, given a column of y. Uh, exercise will be in Excel, calculate calculate every single term, for example, calculate x squared, right? Create another column, right? <laughs> and then calculate the summation of that, uh, that, <laughs> that column. Create another column, so y times x, and then calculate the summation, right? So on so forth. So that uh, exercise will be, you know, <laughs> basically given this formula in Excel, calculate every single term, and then calculate to the formula beta hat, right? But of course, nowadays uh, we have we have a better software. We have our studio. We don't have to. We don't have to do the, that kind of exercise. But anyway, that's the way, for example, Excel does a calculation of this all or less estimator. Anyway, <laughs> so R, I'll show you how to do it by using R. R very cool so that given, you know, we don't want to do this dirty work by ourselves. We want to give the data set Feed the data set to to computer. <laughs> Use a command. Hey, run regression for me. Give my give me my alpha. Give me my beta. Right. That's the way nowadays. All right. That's the first proof. How to 
how to uh, derive alpha hat, beta hat. Uh, now let's move on to to check to do the second proof, which is uh, if our beta hat uh, uh, beta hat all or less beta hat is that unbiased? Is that efficient? Is that consistent? We're gonna do the second proof by checking the the nice properties. Uh, you know, is that hold or not? Right. So before before I should do the proof, I want to do some preparation. What I want to do is, uh, first of all, I will simplify our beta, set, beta hat into this. I will show you our beta hat up there, our beta hat up there. This is an ugly form, right? I will show you this beta hat could be simplified to 3.6. This is much better. So, but first of all, I need to introduce a shorthand notation little x. The originally, Originally, the formula is based on big X. That's my original variable X, right? For example, original X is my education. Original Y, big Y is my wage, right? Let's introduce a shorthand notation, little x. What's little x? Little x is my original X minus X bar. X bar is an average X. That's my little x. So that once I have little x, my formula could be nicely, you know, <laughs> reduces to this. This is much better than before, right? So let me give you some uh, introduction. What's little x? Very simple. Very simple. For example, say my original x. This is my original x. For example, say. I make up some values right here. I have five, uh, I have say eight, I have say two. Suppose I have three numbers uh, for, for original X. So, oh. <laughs> better, better. So my X three, takes three different values, two, five, and eight. So that if you want to calculate x bar, the average of these two, the summation is uh, two plus eight plus five should be 15, right? 15 divided by three, average happens to be five right here. Five, this number is average. In other words, x bar is five. Let me write down right here. x bar, x bar is simply five, right? So, <laughs> so, how do I calculate my little x? Let me draw another line for my little x. My, my little x, my little x is big X minus uh, x bar, right? So right here, x bar is five. So the first number minus five, so that I got Two minus five, so that I get uh, negative uh, three, right? Second number, five minus five, so that I got zero, right? Next number, eight minus five, so that I got three, right? So, so the relationship between my original x, big X, and the little x, right? The relationship is right here. I converted the original number into my little x, see? The purpose of this little x, this kind of little transformation is after this little transformation. So my little x, my little x gonna be centered at zero. That's all. <laughs> my little x gonna be centered at, at zero. So originally, for example, so no matter wage or, no, or education, let's say education, say I have a, uh, Say eight years of uh, eight years education, nine years, uh, ten years, uh, eleven, so on the worst. Suppose average is uh, ten years, ten years education, right? So I simply calculate this a little transformation after minus x bar minus the the average of uh, education, right? So my little x becomes uh, centered at zero, some negative, some positive, so that's all. So that's why. This little transformation, little x, x minus x bar, we have a terminology we call it de mean, de mean. <laughs> de mean means, uh, let me write down right here. We call it uh, 
the mean transformation. What's the mean? DE means we remove the mean, get rid of the mean, so that everybody minus the mean. After the BD mean transformation, the variable simply becomes uh, you know centered at a zero. That's all. <laughs> so so after this D mean transformation, by using this little x, our formula is much better, right? Little x times y, little x squared, right? So <laughs> that's a much better formula now. But not done yet. I continue to introduce one more notation to further simplify my formula. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to introduce a little w. By using w, my beta head right here further you know, written to w times y and then summation. So that, first of all, what's my w? w definition is a little x divided by summation xi squared. Actually, if you take a closer look, my x, um, my w, my w actually is simply this part, right? That's my w, right? So that, that's why my beta hat could be rewritten to w times y and then summation, right? And that's all, <laughs> right? So that uh, why I want to why I want to introduce this kind of notation. First of all, actually, this notation first of all will be will be very sim will be useful, very you know will be useful when I do proof. But second of all, actually, it shows the meaning of uh, of the all or less beta hat. What's the formula for all or less beta hat? It's based on weighted summation of y. Again, the slope, estimator of slope is weighted summation of y. The weights, weights is w. w is a function of x, little x, right? Little x is a function of a big x. In other words, the weights w is based on my x, right? So that again, all of us better have the slope, better have is a weighted summation of y, where weights actually determines by x, right? So that uh, once I show you th this kind of proof, I will show you, for example, depends on your weights x, some of your some of those equations, the weights will be large, some of them will, weights will be small, right? So that I'll put weights multiplied by their multiplied by their y. Y is why is our weight, right? So that if I put weight times a, 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 a weight and then calculate the summation, right? So that actually not all of the, not only all of this uh, estimator, later on, whatever estimator, for example, GLS two Staley square, even, even fancy estimation such as a non-parametric <laughs> regression, even though something you never learned before, but uh, <laughs> no worry. Any estimator of those those kind of slope could be always rewritten, always interpreted as a weighted summation of y. The difference will be simply depends on how do you calculate your weights. Different estimator, just a different by how do you calculate your weights? That's all. So a fancy version of our estimator basically just use a very complicated, maybe a non-parametric non version. Uh, to calculate the weights, right? <laughs> that's all. That, and so that's why I want to show you this kind of notation. But anyway, uh, let me uh, mention some uh, some properties, and then you know, uh, before taking the break, this W, this WI, again, the formula of uh, WI is right here. WI is right here. This WI has three nice properties. You don't have to prove you don't have to prove them, but uh, trust me, they are true. <laughs> you know the proof of these properties I already provided in the in the right here some proofs in the lecture notes. I already proved all those uh, you know notations for you. I, I pr pro provided all those detailed proof for you, so, such as how to prove proper number one, proper number two, so on and so forth. But for us, you don't have to do the proof, but simply trust me, 
WI has some nice properties. First one, summation of the weights equals to zero. In other words, some weights are negative, some weights are positive, so that overall summation of weights equals to zero. This is the first property. Second property, weighted summation of x equals to one. Weighted summation x equals one. The intuition of the second property actually, again, exactly the same as the graph I showed you, 45 degree line. If your y equals to x, then the, the slope beta hat, you know, beta hat simply should be exactly one. That's exactly the second you know, property. So again, this is not, a, not required, but that's the intuition. Third property, if you square the weights and then sub summation, it simply reduced to one divided by summation little x i square. So, you know, we simply provide those three properties right here. Again, you don't have to do the proof. Simply trust me, they are true. <laughs> so if you want to check them out, I provided those proof already for you in the appendix. So for our, uh, for our homework exam, uh, for our homework exam, the first proof we only require, you know, derive up to here. From equation 3.5 to equation 3.6, this is not required. If you want to verify, actually very simple, it has a simply plug in, simply plug in little x into right here so that you can see that, you know, nominator simply reduced to the nominator up there, the bottom or simply also reduced to the bottom up there. The proof very easy, but again, not required. From equation 3.6 to 3.7, again, not required. Uh, but again, if you want to prove, if you want to verify, very simple, simply plug in WI into right here. So that very easily you're gonna see simply reduces 3.6, right? But anyway, these are not required. So, so far, so far, the first proof, the first proof to derive beta hat only require up to here, 3.5. The second proof to derive the nice property, we're gonna start from this equation, 3.7, by using these properties so that we're gonna show beta hat is unbiased, is consistent, is sufficient. That we're gonna do the second uh, pro, uh, second proof to, to, to prove a beta hat has nice properties. We're gonna do it uh, uh, after break. Let's take a 10 minutes break. Uh, after break.